I'm JG, welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm going to be reviewing the new album from Lord Melodrama. Now this is Lord's second album. She's a New Zealand singer, pop uh, artist, I guess you would say alternative pop artist. And initially when she first got popular a couple of years back with her first album, I didn't really pay much atten attention to her. Uh, and that's really mostly my fault because uh, back then I was really into rock music and I had this notion that anything that wasn't really rock music wasn't good music or like shouldn't even be music at all. I know that's a really stupid thing to say. But then again, I was like 14 years old, so you know, I wasn't very smart back then. No one really was when they were 14. Fortunately, I've grown a lot since then in terms of my music taste and just, you know, in general. Uh, good thing I'm not thinking those kind of things anymore, and it's allowed me to explore lots of new music genres. And, you know, I heard lots of uh, other music critics here on YouTube talk positively about Lord, but I didn't really get around to actually checking her out until she released the lead single for this album, Greenlight, which I did a track review a while back. If you remember from that track review, I was saying how I was new to her, and that was uh, kind of the first song I heard from her. I went back and then listened to her first album, which I enjoyed. I thought it was a really good album. I kind of regret not getting into it back when it first came out. But looking forward to this uh, album now that just came out, Melodrama, I think that this is a big improvement over her last album, even though I did really like that first album. You know, with pop music, it's kind of uh, expected that artists don't exactly grow all that much, and that they just kind of, you know, produce radio hits, and that's it. That's not exactly true all the time, however, and Lord is an example of this, kind of how this album shows a great improvement in her uh, musical capabilities and just her overall from her last album. Now, her last album, or her first album that is, was released when she was only 16 years old, so you know, that's r rather young, very young, still a teenager then, and it was a very mature look at, uh, you know, life of a teenager at the time period, kind of what's expected of teenagers, what teenagers kind of think and dealing with these expectations, just growing up. Those were a lot of themes that were explored, but she had a very honest and mature uh, look at these issues that I think most teenagers wouldn't be able to have. And as a result of that, she was able to make a product that I don't think many other artists would be able to produce. Now here on this album, she's now 20 years old, I believe, which is still rather young, but she's going in a completely different direction with the lyrics because this is now sort of a concept album. It's a breakup album, more specifically. And while those types of concept albums aren't uncommon, uh, this one I think stands out as being one of the better ones because it manages to keep that honesty uh, and just kind of, you know, very straightforward personal nature that Lord had on the first album but is now applying them to different subject matters. You know, like breakup songs and even breakup albums, they, there's so many of them that exist already and, you know, it, it kind of feels like with songs that come out of that uh, subject matter, lots of times they're just retreading the same ground over and over again, because then again, how much could you really say about one thing? But here, Lord manages to bring a new insight to some of these issues in a way that's very interesting. It doesn't feel redundant here. It doesn't feel like I've heard these kind of messages before on previous albums or songs, which is rather interesting, given that this concept is, you know, as old and overused as it is. You know, given that it's a breakup album, uh, this is a rather sad album all the way through. Uh, there's some moments where the instrumentation just gets a bit, uh, not exactly happy, but more upbeat in its sound, more energetic. And this provides a break from a lot of the sadder moments here on the project. However, as a whole, I would say the project maintains a very sad atmosphere, which I do enjoy. It creates a very solid atmosphere throughout the project, and it just makes the overall product feel very solid all the way through, which is something that you really don't see all that often in pop albums. Like I said, most pop artists are focused mostly on getting singles and radio play. This was clearly made to be consumed as an entire album. Sonically, this album is also uh, going in a new direction from Lord's previous album. Now, Pure Heroin, her first album, was very minimalistic in terms of the production on it. There's those very sparse synths and drums in there, and it kind of worked for what it was going for. You know, as I said before, she was 16 years old at the time, and she was talking about these very sort of young concepts, I guess you could say life of a young person, and, you know, the very simple instrumentation kind of matched with that, kind of like she was this uh, very young, new to the music industry, and as a result, she doesn't have all this lavish production going along with it. But here on this album, she does bring a bit more uh, lavish production going on in the background here, but it kind of works with this whole concept. It creates a very moody atmosphere, a very sad atmosphere, and it works very well here, and it moves in a different direction from the previous album, and it just creates, you know, a personality of its own. While this album does definitely seem like a concept album, of course, I feel like it was definitely inspired by real events in Lord's life. Um, I don't feel like it's being told like a story, like, you know, all the way through, uh, like, first this happens in track one, and then track two follows immediately after that. It feels more like a collection of, you know, 
random memories from this breakup that are just assembled here in this order that we get. It kind of, you know, I get the image of her, uh, like, I, I kind of get the image of her, like, at night or while she's asleep. These are the memories that kind of creep into her mind during her dreams or, like, as she's trying to fall asleep or something like that. It, I kind of get that from the album artwork, which I believe has Lord, I believe it's Lord on the album artwork. I'm almost certain about that, and in her, you know, it's like at nighttime. It, it, that's that combined with the atmosphere of the album. It just sounds like a very nighttime album, if that makes any sense. Kind of like this is what's flowing from her mind as you know she's recalling this uh, past relationship, and you, all you get are these fragments of the relationship here and there. But you know, looking at all these fragments together, you can kind of paint the entire picture for yourself. At least that's how I kind of perceived it. And I think that's rather cool. In fact, there are some tracks here on the album that are specifically about reminiscing. Take the track Supercut, for example, which is about uh, remembering just the relationship that she was in. Some of those memories being happy memories. And then another track that has a bit more of a happy feel to it, I guess you could say, is The Louvre, which, you know, is an art museum, I believe, in France. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, though. And, um, while these tracks kind of provide her looking back at happier moments in the relationship that she was in, I guess, before it went downhill, and that's kind of matching the instrumentation, having a bit more energy. I still feel like there's this very kind of dark atmosphere over these tracks. Kind of like, you know, these memories here might be happy, but Lord already knows that what's going to happen. She knows that the relationship's going to go downhill because she's remembering this from a later date. And as a result of that, she kind of remembers these memories. You know, while she remembers them as being happy, she knows the unfortunate outcome that's going to come later on. And I think that's kind of an interesting atmosphere that the tracks kind of have to them. Sure, they might seem happy, but really, they're not. Lord also has this really kind of funny uh, line in the Louvre where she's talking about, uh, she's kind of uh, imagining herself kind of being like a painting in the Louvre or some art in the Louvre. And she's kind of like, um, well, I'm going to be there, but I'm going to be like in the back, of course, or something along those lines. I thought that was kind of funny, not like a laugh out loud and like, you know, start crying because you're laughing so hard kind of funny. Just kind of, it brought a smile to my face. And given that the lyrics of the track are kind of one of the happier moments on the album, I guess this would make sense for her to kind of, had this somewhat humorous line in there compared to some of the other tracks here on the album. I, I really don't know what to say about it besides that. It was just kind of an interesting line in there that I found enjoyable. While those tracks provide a bit of a happier uh, feel to them, I think the closing track Perfect Places also has a bit more of an upbeat feel in the instrumentation. But uh, those tracks, uh, while they may provide a sort of upbeat instrumentation to them, there are some other tracks that don't even bother with that and just go straight for the emotional sadness factor. Take the track Liability which is arguably one of the best tracks here on the album, one of the best tracks I think Lord has ever made. It's just a, a kind of piano ballad that works very well in my opinion. Uh, these kind of tracks are usually either really hit or miss for me. Uh, sometimes they come off as too sappy or too whiny, but this isn't really the case. She provides some very interesting lyrics, some new perspectives that I, don't, I haven't really heard in other tracks kind of like this. And uh, it's a really kind of just sad track, I guess you could say. There's no better word to describe it besides sad. Lord also touches upon the concept of trying to escape the sadness of her breakup, her, through her, her relationship problems, through things like being in the presence of other people, just uh, parties, trying to just fit in with other crowds, I guess, kind of to forget what's going on around here. You can kind of see this in tracks like both Sober songs, as well as the closing track Perfect Places, where she just kind of talks about, you know, what exactly is going to happen after the party's kind of over and after this whole situation, after you're done uh, being with all these people, when you're just you again, what's going to happen? I feel that's kind of uh, her reminiscing about all these tracks is kind of what ends up happening as a result of that. That's, that's a really interesting concept. She provides uh, a very honest look into this kind of lifestyle, trying to escape a breakup through other means. And I, that's something I've seen before in other tracks, but she provides a very honest uh, perspective of it, a very realistic uh, perspective and it works as a result. So as far as being a pop album goes, you know, pop music tends to be catchy, uh, things along those lines. There's, there definitely is some of that here on this album. Take the lead single Green Light, which I talked about in track review before, which I'll probably have uh, linked in the description and annotated at the end if you want to check that out. But I'm going to talk about it here anyway. Uh, the chorus of this track is really catchy. This track also has a bit more energy to it than some of the other ones here, a bit more of an upbeat energy that is. And, um, it's a nice start off to the album. It provides some nice energy and some catchiness that kind of hooks you in right at the beginning before moving on to some of the tracks with some deeper lyrics. That's not the same Greenlight doesn't have deep lyrics to it, but you know you get to explore uh, this whole uh, relationship, this whole uh, breakup in more detail later on. And Greenlight just kind of hooks you in right from the start. It does a good job of it. I also like that Lord is exploring some new song structures. Take the track Hard Feeling slash Loveless, which is a two-part song. Um, it's not exactly a super... 
uh, you know, wild out there progressive so or song structure or anything like that. But for a pop artist, um, it's definitely interesting having a kind of a two-part song. And I like the transition between the two parts. I like how the second part kind of comes in with a bit more aggression, I guess you could say. It's not super aggressive or anything like that, but it kind of uh, captures some of the anger I think that you might feel during a breakup, and it works well. There's also a lot of catchy moments here on the album. Track Homemade Dynamite, which just has a chorus that gets stuck in your head rather easily. Green Light, like I mentioned before. Uh, Baloo, that's another one that I get stuck in my head a lot. Um, overall, it's just... There's some moments here that go for a more typical kind of pop approach with a very catchy chorus, but it, they keep that dark atmosphere of, you know, this whole breakup concept and have some very deep lyrics going along with them. So overall, uh, this album, I think, is one of the year's best so far. Definitely the best pop album I've heard this year. Then again, I don't listen to much pop, so, um, yeah, take that for what it is. It's still a great album. Uh, I think it's definitely an improvement over her last album because while I enjoyed that one, this one I feel like is a lot more cohesive. I like the concept and how it's executed here. And all I can really say is if this is what Lord's making at uh, 20 years old, I'm really excited to see what she's going to be making going forward. That's kind of what I felt listening to her first album, you know, if this is her at 16, what is she going to be like at 20 and then going on forward. 20 is definitely an improvement over what she was at 16. Uh, so I'm excited to see what she's going to do in the future. But for right now, I think that this is a great album. She manages to pull off a rather old uh, concept that has been done many times before, but she provides a very new perspective to it, which uh, I greatly appreciate. I think that the lyrics here are very cohesive altogether. They tell a very interesting story, even if they're not told, you know, like I said before. It's like track one tells this, and then that's immediately followed by track two, which continues the story. It's more fragmented, but still very cohesive. So yeah, overall, I'd have to highly recommend this album to you if you're a fan of, you know, I guess pop music. Uh, if you don't even like pop music, this I guess I kind of classify Lord as pop music for people who don't like pop music because it has a lot of those deeper lyrics, that whole kind of album concept going with it. That I think those kind of people would enjoy. So yeah, I highly recommend this album. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you leave a like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future album reviews and things like that. Uh, leave a comment down below sharing your thoughts on the album. Uh, thank you for watching, and stay golden.